Good evening and welcome to Kinship Carers UK. Tonight we have special guests from virtual schools and I'd like to introduce you to three lovely ladies that have come along to explain all about virtual school and what they do. So I'd like to introduce Paula. Hello Paula. Hello, lovely to see you all. So Paula, can you tell me where you're from and what do you do? Okay, so I am... Um... I'm, I'm a Worcester, Worcester born and bred, one well, Malvern born and bred, and have been with the virtual school for two and a half years now. Um, but my background for the last eight, nine years has been with independent fostering agencies. Um, and that's where I've been, been where my experience has come from. Um, so what, I, what <clears throat> we do as learning advocates is we work with um, children with, who have got care orders um, and with schools and social care uh, to support improving educational outcomes for for vulnerable learners and children um, care experienced children so that those those gaps start to close between other the other children and, and care experienced children so that's that in a very very minute nutshell kind of what we do thank you paula and our other lovely guest is colette <coughs> hello colette Hi, I've never been called a lovely guest before, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, my name's Colette Maynard Bond, and I'm the virtual school head for Worcestershire. Um, I, I live in Worcestershire. I've lived in Worcestershire probably for the last 25 years, but maybe you can tell from my accent that I hail from London. Um, I, I've been virtual school head for just over two years. Uh, I have a, a teaching background. It's a statutory responsibility for local authorities to have a virtual school head. Uh, and so I, I took that, took that uh, role two and a half years ago. But prior to that, I was working for the local authority school improvement team. And I was supporting the virtual school in Worcestershire for two days a week, um, probably for two, about two years before I, I, I took on the role as virtual school head. We'll probably talk a little bit more about um, virtual schools and their and their remit and their role and and, and our vision um, for Worcestershire, which I'm sure is fairly similar to other local authorities. Thank you, thank you, Claire, and my lovely guest Fiona. Hello, Fiona. Hello. Uh, yes, so I'm Fiona Eads. So uh, I actually have the same role as Paula. So I'm one of the learning advocates within our team. Um, I am actually from Worcester, so I have not moved far because I'm still here. Um, and, and yes, in terms of um, experiences, I've um, worked for an IFA before, so an independent fostering agency. I joined virtual school um, seven or eight years ago. I can't believe it's gone that quick. Um, so I actually used to work directly with our, our children. Um, but as some of you are aware, virtual schools have changed over time. Um, and actually, you wouldn't know this now, Enza, but I'm also a registered foster carer now too. So um, lots has happened. <laughs> yes, lovely. I've known Fiona for a few years, quite a few yes. years. We're not even going to go that far, are we? <laughs> it's, been, <laughs> it's been a long time. <laughs> it has. <laughs> right, would somebody like to tell us a little bit about um, mm. what you do? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go first. Thank you. Um, so um, we, we we have a statutory function to support our, our children in care, but also for the previously looked after children as well. So there's a, a, a team of learning advocates of which Fiona and Paula are, are fulfill that function. And we have administrators as well. And we have a previously looked after children's advisor. So our remit in terms of previously looked after children uh, would be to provide information and guidance. So it's a very different role for the virtual school than the, the role we have for children who are currently in care. So in Worcestershire, we have just over 800 children and young people in, in care. Um, and we have a, a duty to monitor and track their educational attainment and ensure that they are the schools are doing their very best to make sure that those children are making progress so we are we i i regard us as influencers not in terms of 
um, how we might use that, that term now in terms of um, internet influencers. But we influence, we're the advocates for education um, uh, whenever we whenever we meet teachers on our, all of our visits to schools. We're uh, talking to colleagues within Worcestershire Children First. We are advocating for our, for our children, to have, for them to have um, equitable access into schools, so admissions processes, um, that the quality first teaching that they receive, the interventions that they might receive. We're providing advice, support and guidance to every school where we have children in care. Uh, and, our, and our team do that in a variety of ways. And I think Paula, Paula and, and Fiona will, will come on to that in the moment. So we work in partnership with schools and social care. We Part of our role is to prepare the children, young people in care for, for adulthood and for independent living. And we signpost to lots of different services because obviously as a small team of, of 15 of us, and over 800 children, young people, we can't possibly provide the services, but we know where those services are and we signpost to those services, whether they happen to be um, academic or pastoral um, interventions, we will signpost to support our children, young people. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so what, what, so you've mentioned about how you work with schools. So what is your role? Are you independent? Are you working for the local authority? Um, so where do you sit in all of that? Yeah, so we, we work for the local authority. Um, local authorities ha have to have a virtual school head. Um, it's up to each individual local authority to decide on the structure of their virtual school. We have 10 learning advocates, of which Paula and Fiona are two of those 10. Um, I, th I think I'll hand over to them to, to describe what their role is and what their key functions are, because they're, they're really crucial to um, challenging schools, holding schools to account, giving advice, support and guidance to enable all of the children in care to succeed and they play a really crucial role in that so I'm going to hand over to well probably both of them would want to talk to you about what they actually do. Thank you so who would like to go first? Is this one yours? <laughs> I think it is I think so um yeah so I'll, I'll go ahead um so as many of you, many of you are aware, you've got the the personal education plans, uh, which is a, a statutory. Um, so, as Colette said, you know, um, we do challenge schools and things uh, in terms of how they're supporting our children. But the PEP and the personal education plan meeting is um, a really good platform to do that. So, you know, it, it allows us to have discussions around our, the pupil voice, uh, their progress and attainment, um, and you know should there be any patterns in them maybe not making expected progress that's our opportunity to be able to to challenge them or or maybe seek uh, what support we can put in place and all of that is linked into um, the targets so I'm sure that's the same for other authorities in a nutshell um, but within Worcestershire I know that um, we, we kind of tend to have different focuses as well um, you know, I think something that's fairly new for us is um, careers. You know, we're really trying to, to kind of open up um, the opportunities for our children in care. So we're trying to get schools on board in, in other aspects as well. Um, so outside of the, the PEP meeting where, you know, I'm sure you're all invited to, um, we actually have other other areas that we tend to monitor. So, um, for example, those that are receiving less than 25 hours of education, these uh, are monitored weekly by their learning advocates um, just to check in and, and see what's working or not working um, because they're part time. And really, our aim is for them, for all of our children to have 25 hours. Um, we'll also support in other ways, maybe admissions. So if any of our children maybe move um, to another location and need to attend a new school, then we're happy to help with that process. And we'll liaise with the social workers. We'll look at the schools, um, maybe get in touch with them. Um, I know I've got other authority carers in this. So actually um, something um, that's useful to know is actually as Worcestershire and other virtual schools, if we have a child going to another authority, 
we'll actually sometimes get in touch with that virtual school and just seek their support about that school as well, which is um, it's always useful, isn't it, Paula? Absolutely, yeah, and, and all of the things that, that Fee's just said. We, I mean, we, we, we sort of liaise with so many different teams, yeah. um, which I'm sure Colette will come on to cover, but we work a lot with the, the, the SEND team, the Special Educational Needs and Disabilities team. We work with admissions and exclusions, um, the Section 19 Vulnerable Learners team, all of these teams to just try and, and, and keep our children accessing the best education for them as full time as possible for them so that we can improve outcomes and life chances and, and so it's a lot of liaising negotiating <laughs> challenging uh, carers play a huge role in that um, and their voices are um, they, they are invited to every single pep and I'm glad to say attendance is really high particularly now everything's virtual it's much easier um so their voice is always heard and we really work hard to get pupil voice as well because it's really important that we hear what our young people have to say and what's not working for them absolutely thank you i think i think mate if i if i can just um, give you some um statistics in terms of worcestershire virtual school and it, it may be a similar proportion wherever you happen to be in the country but We've got 634 children in the care of Worcestershire uh, and they are aged 2 to 16 years of age and 39% of those are cared for by kinship care. So that gives you the kind of the proportion. So 167 of the of the of that total. So so 37 th sorry 39% um, are cared for by um, a family member so uh, that might put some of the conversation into context 75% um, of our children stay in Worcestershire for their schooling 25% are out of county we have three children who live in Scotland we have two two children in Devon so they're spread all over the country as well and we will go to them we will ensure that that you know that we're um, making sure that they are attending school, that the schools don't exclude them. We will do everything we can to support their engagement with their learning and we'll provide uh, training for the staff in those schools to be able to support your children um, as, as well as we, uh, as we possibly can. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what ages of the children? Where, what age does it start? Do you start working? So, so we, we have a remit to, to start to work with the children from the age of two up until their 18th birthday. But we continue on beyond their 18th birthday um, if, it, well, if they're still well, if they're still in education or training. Um, or employment and, and want the virtual school to be part of their life we continue with them until the until the end of year 13 so if you're an 18 year old and you have a, an early birthday in the school year imagine you have a September or an October birthday and you turn 18 we will continue to support up until the end of that school year so you know up until the end of July um, and we have two new learning advocates who are supporting our 16, 17 and 18 year olds. And they are linking with the local authorities, personal advisors and outreach workers. Uh, so that's a, a, a different type of support. But nevertheless, they still get our attention in the same way that the younger children do. Brilliant. Thank you. I know I heard of talks that it's going, they're actually trialling out up to university placements at the moment with a couple of local authorities so watch this space more work for you <laughs> yeah more staff. More staff, please. <laughs> yeah i mean you know paula and paula and fiona they will have um between 90 and 100 children and young people on their caseload so they are incredibly busy um, because as, as, as Paula and Fiona both said, it's not just about carrying out the PEP, the personal education plan meetings, it's all of the other things that go around that, it's making sure that when there's a home placement move, that we find a, a, a good school really quickly, so there's no time lost in terms of um, education. If a young person needs some form of um, learning assessment, 
that we're linking with our um, special educational needs teams and the support services within Worcestershire to make sure that there's a really timely intervention because we want our children to, to do well. And I'm saying our children because I think they're everybody's children. Look, there's some questions in the chat around um, <coughs> the previously is, looked after. Is it okay if we do the questions at the end? Oh, of course, absolutely. Okay. I was just going to try. I was going to add in the chat, but I just... You you can. You can answer all of them. <laughs> if I can, I will. <laughs> Portland can answer all of them. <laughs> She's just volunteered. <laughs> I, can't yeah. see, I can't see the chat, so when, when it comes to it, if you can, if you can um, um, call them out, and, um, and I'm sure between the three of us, we can answer most things. We will. What's the difference between... The virtual head and the learning advocate? Um, I guess it's a bit like um, any other school in that there's a head teacher. So I, I guess in a crude term, the buck stops with me. Right. I, 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 I would have a more of a, a strategic view about um, um, action planning in terms of where I want the virtual school to move to. Um, uh, I, I would be in charge of the monitoring and, and the tracking of the children. Um, but as I say to the team, we are all a cog. We're all the same size cog. And when we have one cog missing, we don't function as a team. So we are very collaborative in our, in our approaches. But yeah, that's, that, I guess that's the difference. Thank you. Thank you. That, um, that explained that one. Uh, what experience <laughs> do you have to have to become a virtual head or a learning advocate? OK, um, to be a virtual school head, you would need to have an education background. Um, and it is a statutory requirement that each local authority has a virtual school head. And I think, as I said before, the actual structure of the virtual school will differ from local authority to local authority. Um, I think you would need to have a, a real, really good understanding of, of the needs of vulnerable children and their, their adverse childhood experiences. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think in terms of being a virtual school head, you would need to be able to talk and convince school leaders that um, what you wanted for the children in care and previously looked after children um, was in everybody's best interest, so to be persuasive. I think what we all need is a bag load of resilience because it, it's, it, you know, advocating for 840 children and 690 previously looked after children um, with a small team of 15 of us you know, we need to have lots of energy, drive, belief that we that we can make a difference. I, I think relationships is really important. So hopefully, you see with uh, with with Paula and Fiona, they sound approachable, don't they? They're lovely, lovely people, um, but they're all, they also know what they're advocating for, and and they and they and they won't stop until they get the results that the children need. Mm. So they need drive, they need enthusiasm. We all need to work strategically with other teams because we know as a virtual school, if we operate in a silo within the local authority, we'll only get so far. So we've got to link with all of the vulnerable learner teams. Um, we've got to link with the SEND teams. We, we, we need to work collaboratively with social care and with schools. So, so we've got to be approachable, collaborative, um, we've got to be good listeners. We've definitely got to be problem solvers because problems occur all of the time. Um, and above all, we need to go the extra mile. And every day, I know that all of the team in Worcestershire, um, Paul and Fiona, in Barry, you know, but every day they go the extra mile because we, we do it for the children and young people. Thank you. Anything uh, for Paul and Fiona? I've known Fiona for many years as a virtual um, learning advocate, and she is brilliant. So I must, you know, put that there. <laughs> Sorry, Paula, it's not that I... You know, oh, it's fine. Okay, that's your pay rise, coming your way. <laughs> and Paula, I'm going to have to leave you there. Thank you. 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 Thank
Okay. You say you support previously looked after children, mm. right? Mm. Do you support children with SGOs or child special guardianship orders or child arrangement orders in kinship families? Yes, so, yes, and yes. <laughs> so, so, but not in the same way. So we have we we know from the school census that we have six hundred and ninety um, previously looked after children in Worcestershire schools. So our remit is slightly different in that um, we only focus on the children in Worcestershire schools, whereas for the children in care, we have 25% who are living outside of the local authority and we continue to support them. With the previously looked after children, the 690 of them, um, it's only those in Worcestershire schools. So out of those 690, I'll, I'll give you some percentages. I'm going to round them up. So 62% um, are children who have been adopted. 28% have SGOs. 4% have a residence order. I guess they haven't changed over yet to a child arrangement order. And that's 6% of our children. What um, what Jade does, who who is our previously looked after children's advisor, she 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 works within the virtual school and is an integral part of our team, is that her remit, according to the Department for Education, is to give advice and guidance to parents, carers, adoption central England. And when schools, individual schools, call her to ask for advice and support and guidance. What those children, young people don't have is a, a, um, a, a statutory right or guidance even to have a personal education plan meeting and the process that goes around that. Um, there isn't the, the finances to employ enough people to do that and it isn't the remit from the, the Department for Education. So what we do have is a, a fantastic website. We do have a helpline which Jade uh, manages and she does answer every request for support. Sometimes it might be a phone call back to, to the parent or, or, or guardian. Sometimes it might be um, talking to the designated, designated teacher in the school. Um, and sometimes it might be a conversation um, with Adoption Central England. So can I just go back to, do you support children that have gone straight into special guardianship orders without going into care first of all? That's not something, it was funnily, funnily enough, Fiona and I um, were talking about this earlier because it's not something actually that we're familiar with. Colette, we had a conversation, you were in a meeting, and we had a conversation with a social worker here because it's not something we were familiar with. Mm. Um, so, so I said, actually, can you go straight to SGO without there ever being a care order? So we called in a social worker, didn't we, Fiona? We did. And, <laughs> and she said, yes, yes, it, you, you can. It, it's not something Worcestershire does or is well, just frequently, I, I believe. So it's not, it wasn't on our radar actually till today. Mm. I don't mm. think that the, 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 an SGO or child arrangement order was possible without there first being a care order. So that was a bit of a learning, learning day for us today. So no, the, we, as a virtual school, we wouldn't be involved because they wouldn't be previously looked after because there's been no care order. Sorry for jumping in, Colette. I just was aware oh, that we'd sorry. had that conversation earlier. So if somebody gave you a call and said, I have a special guardianship order. Um, I need help, my child needs help. Would you be able to go into the school and help advocate for them? Because I know on the on our local authority Absolutely. website. Absolutely, yes. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Because um, we, we, we wouldn't, we don't collect the data of the children's names who the schools say, how many children they have on on their role who are previously looked after we don't collate that information um, the local authority don't collate that information so if someone came on to jade the previously looked after children's advisors uh, helpline or they were to email her or all of the information is on our website absolutely she would help and i presume and that's if not the same across um, the country, hasn't it? If, if not, in general, as a team, um, I mean, 
in terms of expertise, everyone's come from a different background. Even if we didn't have the answers or we didn't think we could do something, we'd absolutely be able to signpost you, uh, as would Jade, um, in terms of other teams within the authority that may be able to help. So it's always worth um, getting in touch if needed. I think we got in touch and I was one of those people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Many, yeah, many we don't we don't we don't turn anyone away because of no. a label. Um, but, but, but 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 what we do have is um uh Jade has produced an inclusion plan that she asks schools if there's if there's a, a request for more support for a, a child who's been previously looked after or an SGO and schools need help she's written an inclusion plan which will support schools in, in um, writing targets and, and looking at different activities that would support that individual child or young person. Um, parent, guardian, carer would be part of um, supporting the outcomes of that of that um, uh, of those of those targets. So I guess that is her equivalent of a pet but she doesn't go to indivi individual schools. There's, there's one of her and she's part-time and there mm. are 690 children. So it's, it, it's not something that, um, that the local authority receives funding to give that level of support, I'm afraid, but there is support there and she absolutely will help. And the, the other thing to remember is also is that as a, as a local authority and as a virtual school we're upskilling trying to get all of our schools upskilled to tra be trauma-informed schools <laughs> by you keep moving the goalposts closer and closer Colette was it now 2024 yes. and I think as a, as a as a country there is an aim to get all um, schools trauma informed by um, 2025 I think it is for the whole of the country so that one of Colette's favorite sayings is a rate what is it a rising tide raises all ships so yeah. that that training for schools will impact all students ultimately yeah Right. It's, level, it's a level five trauma informed schools diploma it takes 11 days to achieve um, and it, it's about schools being inclusive schools being um, trauma informed attachment aware um, and we have nearly 50 percent of our schools engaged so far so we're on track to to achieve our 2024 mm -hmm. mission and, you know, no matter who you are attending that particular school, you will be supported by an emotionally available adult. So, you know, that the, the, the children, young people, therefore being really good hands. And I suppose that's the same across the country, isn't it? Um, well, we've taken, this, we've taken this approach. There won't be many virtual schools that haven't embraced um, training in terms of trauma and attachment. But I think we're going for the belt and braces model. Thank you. Um, do you have anything to do with allocate uh, sort of pre pe children that have pupil premium and pupil premium plus for our previously looked after children? Do you um, try and help the schools to direct that funding towards a child? With the with the pupil premium plus um, for previously looked after children, that funding goes directly to the schools the virtual the, vir the individual schools the virtual school doesn't have that sum of money <laughs> no, as, no. As, as as we do for, for for children looked after um if a, if a um, parent guardian carer wants our advice and guidance then yes we will we will give it but schools are within their right to pull that funding um, for the previously looked after children's grant, um, for the for the for the good of a group of previously looked after children, it doesn't have to be spent on an individual child or young person in the same way that Pupil Premium Plus does for children looked after. Thank you. Just, yeah. Um, how do we make the school aware that children? Uh, how how do we make how do we make the school aware that we are we have kinship children or our children have SGOs or child arrangement orders? And would that automatically open the door to you, do you think? Oh, oh, was this you want to answer that one? 
Well, I'm happy to, but if uh, you'd like yeah, to. If, if, if they are previously looked after, um, there's an SGO, um, a child arrangement order or an adoption order, it's the, the it's up to the carers to let school know and I think that's generally done on a um we, we always get those data update forms don't you and there's a there's a there's a question on there but it, it, it's information that's included on the school census um is it January am I right Colette so that goes on the school's um census in January um for the rest of the year and that then gets submitted and that that prompts that pupil premium plus payment um, that comes directly into school to support those children um, and I, I don't know do, does Jade get notified oh I've lost Colette she disappeared does Jade get notified at that st stage as well uh, no, do, no, uh, well, well collect that data once 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 a year she'll yeah. she'll, she'll receive that information um, yeah. and and yes the school if it's if it if if um, if carers don't inform the school by any way they want to verbally email um letter it won't go on the census and the school won't be able to claim the funding for them okay thank you for that i need to um, plug my mobile phone in because i wasn't expecting to use it today oh i'm still here i've just got to go and get my please had to do the same <laughs> i had lot. to do the same <laughs> Hold on, i'll be back <laughs> Um, as kinship carers, can you give us some direction on how to work with schools to ensure that our kinship children are not left behind educationally? That's quite a big task, isn't it? Um, <laughs> um, I mean, in terms of, um, you know, for, for our previously that talked to children and, and some of our, you know, our exchanges and things, you know, you, you're more, in, you are entitled to talk to the school about your child's needs. Uh, you know, you can talk to their tutors or their, their class teachers and things, or if needed, if you feel that it needs escalating, then you can absolutely request to talk to the head teacher, maybe. Um, attending those parents' evenings would be key because that's, that's your chance to get updates as well. Um, I would say the same as Fiona, communication's absolutely yeah. key. So um, keep knocking on doors, keep talking to whoever it is you need to talk to until you, you get the results that you, you need um, for your young person, for your, for your child. That I mean, communication is um, really important. If they're CLA, obviously you, you're invited to um, their PEP meetings and that's a great opportunity to, to liaise with, with social care and school. Um, but, you know, if um, if they're previously looked after, then, you know, ask the school to look at the virtual school inclusion plan. Um, I actually think there's a copy on our website. I'm, I'm happy to send the links over to you, actually, Enza, so you can share it at yeah. the end of the meeting. Um, but, but maybe that's something to consider. Um, I also, I suppose that a different area to that is um, maybe some of your children, if they've got uh, SEM support within school or EHCPs, again, you're entitled to ask for those um you know, those IEPs, so those individual education plans, they're named many different things. So mm -hmm. I, won't, I won't list them all off, but they're all a similar concept. Um, or if they've got an EHCP, you know, you'll have your annual reviews that you can tap into um, and you can go via the SEND team. And that, I'm sure that would be the same for, for other authorities too. Um, but, but absolutely, you know, you're you're advocating for that child. So you're, you're more than entitled to it. To, ask for views from school so yeah so I think communication is is probably the key yeah make a nuisance of yourself if you're not getting the answers that you think yeah it, it, I do. it gets quite exhausting for kids <laughs> carers I'm it, sure. think, especially for non-previously looked after yeah. children because you're fighting for services that they're entitled to that they can't get so it's yeah. always a struggle yeah, everything feels like a battle yeah do you, I, I noticed a message on the pop-up just before we end our recording. Do you help children that come into the country to yes. say settle in the local authority and yes. obviously they become looked after, you will advocate for them. What about children that move in with family from countries so they haven't got that order that comes with them or looked after order? Would you be supporting them too? Uh, I think the, the virtual school remit is is from, from my part and fees part um, and the other learning advocates we support um, educational outcomes for children with a care order. Jade will um, support 
children, the pre children who have previously had a care order. So for, for those who haven't actually entered the care system in those sense, haven't mm -hmm. become looked after by the local authority, um, we generally, we know we don't get involved. But yes, we do have um, uh, several, you ask young, uh, young people we do, uh, yeah. on our caseload now. Yeah. Well, I'd like to say thank you to the three of you for your time, giving up your time this evening to come in to talk to us. Um, I think we found it very, very helpful. And we'll be, I'd just like to say thank you. We're going to end the conversation now. And...